Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, long time no see. It's a, been a long time since I did one of these um, videos, but I just really felt that I wanted to respond to something that I listened to today, and it's a, a podcast called Truth Be Told. It's called Christians, Politics, and Conspiracy Nonsense. And I listened to it today, and I kind of thought that when I when I started listening to it, I thought, I'm not going to like this. And then I began listening to it, and I began agreeing with 100, I began agreeing 110% with things that were said. And But there were some things on this podcast that I want to say that I disagree with a gazillion percent. And I just chose to respond in this way in a public manner because the podcast was put out in a public manner. So I just kind of wanted to uh, just to come back and just uh, throw in my two cents for this. Minister Grock, I've seen his ministry. I think it's legitimate. I think he's a good guy. I think his heart's in the right place, but I think he's wrong on some of these issues. But, you know, I think if him and I were to sit down and talk, we would find out that we really agree on a lot of things. So I'm, this is not to slam him or to put him down or to start any kind of debate. Um, I appreciate this guy. I don't know him personally. I've maybe had um, some uh, engagement with him on the internet. But um, I just I, uh, the reason I'm doing this is sometimes Christians disagree, and this is one of those times, and I just feel like it needs to um, just kind of be brought up. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. So. Anyway, um, I, I, I just want to respond to the idea of conspiracy nonsense um, and the idea of Christians, you know, um, wasting their time or being too obsessed with this sort of thing. Um, he said a lot of things I agree with on on that part, but I, I, I really just want to um, address the things I disagree with. So, you know, when I read the Bible and I look at uh, what God's Word has to say, I look at the Old Testament, I look at the New Testament, and I see example after example after example of conspiracy. Okay, I'm not talking about conspiracy theory, I'm talking about conspiracy. I'm talking about Daniel in the lion's den, okay? I like to have a bumper sticker that says, Daniel in the lion's den is an inside job, okay? Because what happened were government officials, okay, plotted to get Daniel killed, okay? So we look at what happened with Pharaoh. We can look at what happened in tons of examples in the Old Testament where God sent his prophet to challenge the government officials. So, you know, and even the crucifixion, the execution of our Lord was a conspiracy, okay? Money exchanged hands. It was plotted out, okay? He was turned over. He was turned in. People plotted to do this, okay? And we can look at the book of Acts. We can look, okay, in Scripture and see this theme over and over. So my response to that is I believe Christians should be the first ones to recognize conspiracy, should be the first ones, okay, as students of the Bible to go after this sort of thing, okay? Um, you can't, I don't think you can read Ezekiel 8, Minister Grock, and and just really think that this is not important, okay? Because there were things going on underground, behind closed doors, okay? And we know by Ezekiel 8 that he wanted it exposed. So um, please check out Ezekiel 8 and uh, see what that has to say. I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's crucial. Um, you know, just a comment on Alex Jones real quick. Alex Jones, ah, oh, man, you know, uh, he has said a lot of things that have come true. He said a lot of things that have not come true. Uh, regardless, I'm thankful for Alex Jones. Does he hype a lot of things up? Yes, he does. Um, you know, I, I don't want to be his judge. Um, I pray for him a lot. And I'm thankful for a lot of things that he's exposed. But I think if we're listening to someone like him, we just need to engage discern discernment. That's all we have to do. Um, but I think, I honestly think that his source of news is more trustworthy than anything we're getting from the mainstream media. That's how I feel about Alex Jones. Um, you mentioned about the Nephilim, uh, websites and the, in the, uh, Facebook pages dedicated to aliens and Nephilim. 
and there were like a hundred of them. I'm telling you, if we had a hundred more, it wouldn't be enough. Okay. Why? Because Nephilim are going to come and get us? No. That's not what I'm concerned about because this is being used for ministry. Okay, you, you are familiar that music and, and rock and roll is used for ministry. It's used as a tool, okay, to reach people and to touch people's hearts. I've seen topics like Nephilim and UFOs and things like this to minister to people. I was at a conference a couple weeks ago where five people got baptized. So to say that this is a waste of time, um, you know, do I see people getting obsessed with it? Do I see people worshiping things? Is there adultery going on? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. But let me say that the majority of the people that I know in this community are concerned about souls. So I just hope you're not generalizing and just saying that this is what's going on across the board. And I don't think you are. But you didn't clarify that you weren't. So I just want to kind of, um, I want to touch on that and mention that. Um, you know, when you, um, when we talk about chemtrails, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know, but I don't believe that it's healthy for us. Just like, you know, and, and is it killing people? I don't know. Are GMOs killing people? I believe they are. I think we need to talk about them. I think it needs to be brought up. I am against GMOs because they're killing people, just like I'm against abortion because abortion is killing people. And I think we need to be concerned about that just as much. Murder is murder, no matter if you do it with a scalpel in the womb or if you do it with poison, okay? And I know you didn't bring up GMOs, but I'm bringing that up as another example that can fall in these categories of conspiracy theories. Um, and you also mentioned about just all of the hype and that we see all of these things. And with the election, everybody said, you know, you know, I remember when Clinton, okay, was coming to the end of his term. And everybody said, Clinton is going to step in, he's going to become a dictator, and he's going to be the last president, and there's going to be a no election. I remember that, okay? They did the same thing with Bush. They did the same thing with Obama. Over and over in the next election, I guarantee it, they're going to say the same thing. So, you know, we see a lot of people getting their feet wet, wet and jumping into this and just, you know, getting excited about things. Um, you're going to have that. Chris White did an amazing podcast about... New World Order Freakout Syndrome. I highly recommend it. Um, very, very good. There's a lot of truth in that. So, but um, well, anyway, what I was getting at was, you know, um, a lot of people get people freaked out that there's going to be martial law. Well, I think that's a legitimate concern because over this last, last weekend, martial law was a reality in Boston. Over one man, over one missing 19-year-old kid, they shut down the city of Boston, so I think that's a legitimate concern. Um, again, I'm not I'm not bringing this up just to start a debate or a fight. I, um, with all due respect, I just bring this before you. And since you put out the podcast publicly, I'm putting out my response publicly. I think Christians need to be not obsessed in an unhealthy way, okay? But when we look at First Peter and we see that the prophets looked in, okay to these things intently with the greatest care, okay? And the first chapter of Peter, when they were looking at prophecy. I want to read something real quick. This is out of a book called Hitler in the New Age. And I, this is why I believe that it's important to look into these things. And we need to have discernment. And, you know, I, somebody, so I've been accused of being obsessed with this stuff before. And my immediate response is, I'm not obsessed with this stuff. I'm obsessed with leading people to Christ and presenting the gospel of Christ. That's where my heart is. And I know this community and I know these people. And I know there are some fringe people out there who are like you described, but I believe they're few and far between. And, I, and again, just to generalize this and to say that everybody, and you didn't say that to be fair, but, you know, just the idea that, if you talk about Nephilim, I mean, there is a there's a situation where people are experiencing alien abduction all around the world. And the church needs to be able to respond to this. If the church can't respond to it, then the world's going to respond to it. And it's not going to lead anybody to Christ. We have to have an answer. We know what that answer is. We know that aliens are not extraterrestrial, they're extra dimensional. So anyway, I want to read this real quick. It's out of a book called Hitler in the New Age. And 
it just says this in on page 172. This is by Bob Rosio. It says, The church is the only true enemy of Satan, the only foe capable of understanding and hindering his plan. The church must, however, study her enemy and his plans more thoroughly in the light of biblical prophecy in order to do effective spiritual battle. The church needs to understand the working of the demonic world and be able to discern and resist it through the wisdom and power of the Spirit of God. Without knowledge, the church will be slow to see the real picture, slow to respond to the trumpet. Without the, without the power of the Holy Spirit, the church will be powerless to stand firm and fight. You know, I think if Christians and Jews would have had the internet in Germany, a lot more lives could have been saved. They could have got the word out, okay? Um, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of problems when it comes to the internet. There's a lot of problems. I see the same thing that you do, and I feel the same way that you do, the way that you mentioned it in your podcast about some of these just crazy things, okay? But we need to forge that with discernment with God's word, with his truth. It's filled with conspiracy. Christians should be the first ones to be able to jump on this and say, hey, something's up. Something doesn't smell right, okay? On day one, I knew something wasn't right about Sandy Hook, but I didn't know. But I had that discernment. I had that gut feeling, okay? Um, so I would encourage, you know, Christians to not be afraid to... Um, hello. Hello making a movie here, um, to not be afraid to look at this stuff, to study it, to study it in light of prophecy, okay? And, you know, read Matthew 24, read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, okay? And Ezekiel chapter 8, and we can look and we can go on and on and on and know, okay, Psalm chapter 2, Revelation 19, 19, all right? And I, I just want to encourage um, anybody out there, uh, don't be afraid to look at these things, I agree. Don't be obsessed with it. We should not have any fear, okay? And, and anybody that has fear that's a Christian, you're missing the whole point of this, okay? I don't mention any of this to, to bring fear or to um, scare anybody at all. That, that's not the point. Um, I, I've just seen so many people ministered to by bringing up these topics and talking about them, okay? Uh, two good friends did a... Um, did recently did a video that I highly recommend called Giants Among Us at the, um, it was the Nephilim Mounds Conference, and people's lives are being changed. Okay, we're hearing our churches aren't talking about this. We want to know more truth. We want to know a deeper truth. So, um, and of course, that's Russ, Russ Dizdar and L.A. Marzuli uh, did an amazing job. But uh, Minister Grack, you know, through Christ, I love you. Uh, I'm, I'm frustrated about some of the things that you said, but I think if, the, if we talked, you know, I think that we would uh, find out that we agree on a lot of things, and I do agree with a lot of things that you said, but um, I also think that there's ministry to be done here, and that it's, I think it's natural for Christians when we look at what happened with JFK, and we're in the Word, and we're in discernment, to just to kind of like, uh, something doesn't add up here. We need to, you know... It, you know, it's a spiritual issue when it's a truth issue, okay? Because Satan is the father of lies, okay? Um, the Bible says, do not have anything to do with the misdeeds of darkness, but rather expose them, okay? And that's exactly what we see God do in Ezekiel 8. So, you know, and I appreciate every, you know, I don't, I don't disagree with one scripture that you brought up, and I may not agree 100%, and I didn't take notes. I was at work when I was listening to your podcast, so I didn't take notes, um, when I was listening to it, but, um, maybe, maybe I would agree and disagree on some of the context, but listen, I'm running out of time here. I just want to say God bless you. And I just wanted to take a time to, um, to voice this opinion and just kind of respond to this podcast. I know there's going to be a lot of other people out there that feel the same way I do. And probably a lot of people that uh, disagree with me and that's fine. I just want to say God bless, uh, project Check it out. We're about prayer. We're about ministry. We're about 10 million fears. And just having people just become stronger in the Lord, stronger in prayer, stronger in evangelism. So love you guys. God bless you. Hopefully we'll see you again. Bye.